Alrighty, so we are back for another Mad Lad chess lesson here. So today, we're going to talk about how you actually win the game of chess. Chili, do you like winning? Absolutely. I hate I... nothing more than losing. I always as love I. to win. Yeah. And as chess players, him and I, when we lose, we lose hard. Like, tilt city, tilt, tilt city, 10, 10, 10, 20. Um... I tilt really hard when I lose. So I don't like to lose when it comes to chess. And so I thought that today we should probably talk and teach you guys the first class of the Mad Lad Chess Academy, the young gentry that will carry this game on into the future, how to actually win the game of chess. So with that in mind, the way that you win the game of chess is that you have to be attacking the opponent's king and they have to have nowhere else to move. So you'll remember in our last video or when we were talking about how pieces move a piece is under attack when it moves into the the line of sight so remember that rooks can go left and right up and down and so this rook is now attacking this king because it has vision and it could potentially capture it on the next turn but here's the thing in chess you don't really capture the king that i know it's kind of weird i you've probably played chess in such a way where like you capture the king and then the game is over and everything like that. In 99% of the games of chess that you play, that's not the case. There is one rare exception. If you're playing Blitz, which is speed chess, you can capture the king, depending on what rule set that you play in. But for the most part, you don't actually capture the king in chess. You just kind of keep attacking him until he has nowhere to go, and then you win the game. So, yeah, en passant. Yeah, well, we have to talk about en passant. Everybody's loving about en passant. We'll have to talk about that maybe towards the end of the episode here. Yeah, en passant is better than checkmate. So if you... <laughs> okay, that's a joke for another time. So once we learn what en passant is, we will uh, we'll talk about all the wonderful memes that the chess community has for it. So anyway, whenever the king is under attack by another piece, this is what we call check in chess. And check is just a word that we use. There is a fun little tidbit that the word for winning the game when the king doesn't have any moves and he's under attack like this. So you can see that the king can't move here because the rook protects it. This is called checkmate, which comes from the Persian word shamat, which means the king is done. Fun fact, chess was actually, chess has a long, illustrious history. It started in India, it moved through the Ottoman Empire, or the, uh, I can't remember if it's the Ottoman Empire or the Persian Empire, but somewhere along the line, Persian got mixed into it. And so our modern interpretation checkmate is from the Persian word shamat, which means the king is done. And so, yeah, this is what we call checkmate. And when the king is in checkmate, you win the game. Am I doing all right so far, Chili? That king is definitely done. That king is done, so He is fried, cooked, and served seven ways. So, in this way, this, like I said, this is checkmate. But in order to get there, we have to probably do a couple attacks to get there. So, another thing worth noting is that there is no one piece on the board of chess that can capture or put a king into check on its own. Winning the game of chess is a multi-piece endeavor. I could give Magnus Carlsen any piece on the board and he would not be able to checkmate me with just that piece alone. He would need to coordinate that piece with a king or some other piece in order to checkmate me. So, with that in so mind, you'll notice... Against... What's up? Kings against kings are always a draw. So yes. if you don't have both those rooks on the board, then it's automatically a draw. Because yep. there's no way you could possibly win the game. Right. The yep. least you need would be a rook. Right, yes. that's the bare minimum you need. And yeah, so correct. if you have just one rook and not two, then that's also very winning. Yep. You can win with a rook and a king. You cannot win with a rook and a bishop, and you cannot win with a rook and a knight. That's what we call insufficient material. We'll talk about that a little bit down the road. But yeah, a knight and a king can't win, and a knight and a bishop can't win. You need at least a knight and a rook. However, a knight, a bishop, and a king is winnable. It's one of the hardest wins in chess, but it is doable. So, but let's continue with this idea of check and checkmate. So, as part of chess, chess is a very aggressive game. You want to attack. Like, you, not a lot of games of chess are won by playing defensively. You need to mount an offense and attack the king in order to get there. So, with that in mind, this position is pretty open, and it's obvious what we have to do. So, the king can't come to these squares because they're defended by the king. And the other thing is that you can't make a move into check. So, I can't, like, move my king right here. That would be illegal because that would put the king in check. So, in that way, the king has to move maybe somewhere like here or here, but let's say he moves right here. 
then if I move my rook up here, he is now under attack. And when this happens, it is courtesy to say the word check, like verbally say it. If you're playing in a tournament, you don't necessarily have to, but it is good etiquette to do so. So the word check, when you say check, that acknowledges to your opponent that they are their king is under attack. It's reminding them that says, hey, your king is under attack, like you need to move it. And if they don't move it in a way, then that's an illegal move, but we'll talk about that later. Um, so with that in mind, this king is like, oh, no, I got to move. And so he moves over here. And then let's say we bring our rook over here and we attack him again. And we come back over here and slowly we start to chase the king around. Let's say the king comes over here and then we come here, here, we're stacking, we're moving right along. And then we get to a position, something like this. Let's bring our rook over here. You'll notice that this cuts off the king, so he can't come forward, so he kind of has to move back. And then we do something a little like this. We cut him off again, and then come back over here. He's not under attack, but then when we bring this over here, the rook is under attack. He's got nowhere to go, and this is checkmate. Congratulations, you won. Hey, what kind of stuff were we learning? Instead of rook a6, should have been rook g2, uh, leads to mate in two. Yeah. So as Mordor is pointing out, there are multiple ways to checkmate a king, usually in a position. So whenever you hear, like if you ever see M and then a number, so M2, that means mate and two. That means there's a two move sequence that will lead to you winning the game. You can see everything up to like mate and 15. Um, there's some that like computers can get really, really good and force out. Um, yeah, yeah, and this is what's called the ladder mate. And it's mm -hmm. called the ladder mate because we are working with two rooks. And if you see the way that they just moved right now, if you go back a few moves, Drew, mm -hmm. you can yeah. see that. Let's say we were right here, here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's bring actually the king to a1, king or white king a1, just to yeah. really exaggerate the example. You can win this with two rooks. And the way to do this is like Drew just showed us right now is to cut the king off. Mm -hmm. And so let's say, yeah, rook here. If the king moves, uh, we bring the rook down so that we can check him again. Notice that if we check on the other square, if so let's say on our last move we had uh, rook to, yeah, rook this would be possible because the king could just take. And yep. so to avoid this, we would simply bring the rook down to the other mm -hmm. side of the board. Yep. Then the king would move, let's say, to f4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. And then we play rook to Oops. sorry rook f4 rook where now six f6 very nice and notice how the king started off on the f file and he had access to the e file completely now mm -hmm. he has access to the g and h file and mm -hmm. what we want to do the goal of the ladder mate is to leave the king with only one file yep so let's say the king moves again mm -hmm. like over here we cut the king off even more. Make the box smaller. Yep, now he has only one file. This is what we need to checkmate the king. Yes. When the king has only one file, the next check will be checkmate. Bam! Yep. There we go. So, as Mordor was mentioning, this is what we call a ladder mate, or Chili mentioned this as well. It's kind of like rungs on a ladder. So it's like you're stepping up a ladder, and you're moving your rooks over and over and over again until you finally smack the king, and he's dead. You don't always have to do this with a rook and rook and rook as well you can do it with a rook and a queen so let's pretend this is a queen you can also do a queen and a queen ladder mate but this is by far the easiest checkmate in all of chess and it's the one that i like to start out with to illustrate how check and checkmates work but also now you guys know how to do one of your first mates which is the ladder mate so just to recap like chili was saying the goal here is to cut the king off so the king basically when the king is over here he only can go to squares along this dot this column now that's the reason for that is because this rook is cut off and because that is once this rook comes over remember that rooks control the entirety of the column and so the king has nowhere to go he's under attack and then it is lights out but you may be asking to yourself well what if we get into a position where we the king can let's say the king is right here this is right here and this happens so if this is, if it's Black's turn in this position, you'll notice that Black can't really move anywhere, but he's also not under attack. And he can't capture the rook because it's defended by the king. 
this is a different kind of mate. This is not the mate that you want. You want checkmates. You do not want this. This is called a stalemate. And stalemates, I always tell my kids when I'm teaching my class, uh, it's like eating a piece of stale bread. I don't know if you guys have eaten, ever eaten a piece of stale bread, but you take a bite out of the bread and then you just go bleh. And so that's the kind of reaction that I have when I get a stalemate in chess. It's just bleh. So be very, very careful when you're doing checkmates to make sure that the king always has a square that he can move to before you checkmate him. Because if you get into a position like this where he can't move and he's not under attack, then it's a stalemate and that's a draw. And you don't want to take a draw when you have a winning position. So, yeah. Uh, two queen ladders work differently since the stalemate trap. Yeah, the two, the two queen ladder is a little bit different. We can probably talk about that as well. But just to reiterate what we've talked about so far, we have check, which is where the king is under attack. We have checkmate, which wins the game. That means the king is under attack and he has nowhere to go. And we have stalemate, which is where it's somebody else's turn or it's your opponent's turn, but they have nowhere to go. And so they're stuck. And that's a draw. Yeah. So, so just touching on what Morda said, so let's say we have the opportunity to make another another queen. So let's say we have a pawn on d7. Uh-huh. D7? Yeah, let's say d7. D7. And a rook somewhere. Mm -hmm. In this position, uh, it's not really ideal to create a queen because in some positions, when you push the pawn, you create a queen, but it ends up being the slight possibility of being a draw. Yes. Now, this could happen because it's possible to enter stalemate. Mm -hmm. As of when, when you're checkmating with two rooks, it's practically impossible to stalemate. stalemate. Yes. Unless your king's involved, like the example that Drew just showed. But mm -hmm. if it's two rooks and you're not moving the king, you're checkmating with just the king, the, the two rooks, then it's completely fine. So yeah. when promoting, I wouldn't promote to a queen, I'd promote to a rook. Yes. So instead of a queen, do a rook. And that way you just bring it on over. Bam! That's a queen, or that's a ladder mate if ever I saw one, and a good one at that. We've got a lot of distance between these two rooks. They're, they're homies, but they're working from afar. They're like long-distance homies. They're like me and Chili. So we're long-distance homies. Um... But again, the rook can be like right next to right here. It can be up here. So as long as the two are working in tandem, making that ladder smaller and smaller, that's the name of the game here. So just to recap what we've talked about, we talked about how to win the game of chess, and that is by putting the king into checkmate. And the word checkmate actually comes from the Persian word shamat, which means the king is done, which is a pretty cool fun fact. You can tell all your friends and flex on them that you're a chess master because you know what shamat is. Um... But basically, when the king is under attack, we say to our opponent, check most of the time. You don't have to if you're playing in tournament play, but it's a nice thing to do. The check just reminds them that their king has to move. You can't capture the king in chess, by the way. You just have to kind of force him into a position where he can't move. Um, teach YouTube the knight bishop. Oh, God. I don't know if I'm in a position to teach the knight bishop checkmate. That yeah, one's hard. That's a little too advanced. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. We'll get there eventually, baby. Don't you worry. Um but check basically means that the king is under attack and he has to move so if we put our king into check let's say we're right here we put the king into check he's under attack he has to move over or move out of danger and then finally we come over and if the king is under attack but with nowhere to go that is checkmate but also you want to be very very cognizant of stalemates which are positions like this where it's the opponent's turn but they got nowhere to go a stalemate is a draw it's like eating a piece of stale bread that's why you call it a stalemate it makes you go Bleh! And so avoid stalemates whenever you can and always shoot for checkmates. So if we have any questions from chat, let's see. We'll let chat chime in for a little bit. But yeah, we're moving right along. You guys know how the pieces move. You know check and checkmate. We're going to talk about trading pieces here in a little bit. So yeah, well, actually, we just talked about trading pieces. We're doing this kind of out of order because on Twitch, all of you guys that have been here on Twitch know that we did the peace trading thing first. And then halfway through that, we realized that we didn't talk about how to win the game of chess. So we're doing that now. But in the way that it's uploaded on YouTube, it'll be like this one is before the trading pieces one. So it'll all sort out on the back end. So, but yeah, I want to give a shout out to all of our Twitch followers and all our Twitch peeps that have stopped by and chatted and provide a lot of commentary. We got Mordor and love you, baby being real homies checking out the whole time so thank you guys so so much for being here i just love watching this spending thank you so much for the follow i appreciate it so we got another new friend welcome to the mad lad chess academy we're just wrapping up 
So hopefully you guys learned something. If you're watching on YouTube, come check us out on Twitch. We we do these every Friday around 3 to 3.30 p.m. CST. And if you miss out, then don't worry. You can just watch the VOD here on my YouTube channel. But until then, get out, play some chess, go whoop your brother, or whoop your boyfriend, girlfriend, whoop your parents at chess. That's all that we aspire to do here um because <laughs> we want to teach you how to beat your boyfriend or girlfriend at chess because that's a power move jk but yeah play some chess go respect some women and have a great time and we will see you at the next one Bye -bye.